Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shad, Bahasham, Rakakurash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham, meaning in the name Yahweh Shad is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines, Iowa. Coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Harakakwadash. And um, this lesson is inspired through uh, Elder Apostle Gabar's lesson that you see on the screen here entitled Confess His Name. That's a part of our duty as servants of the ministry. All right, and in this lesson, he had made mention. Uh, quoting him, he said, uh, you have to go back to the Hebrew to explain what the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son is. And that's very true. And that's what I want to do in this lesson, uh, focusing on the name of the Son being Yahweh Shai. All right. And even as you see, um, is the Spirit, because uh, right when I pulled this lesson up, as you see, you know, they showed the different comments. And one comment that just popped up that I just noticed was this one down here. <laughs> All right. And it's the Spirit, because Apostle Gabar, I guess he commented on it. But you see at the bottom, um, the guy with the hashtag. Happy X202 puts Yeshua Hamashayak, right? And Yeshua is not his name. It's Yahweh Shai. And we're going to go into that. All right. But it says, uh, what did Apostle Gabara say? He said, uh, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Listening is an art. <laughs> I gave the names in the video, <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah. And that's what we're going to go into. All right. The name of the only begotten son, because, uh, these names are essential for salvation. All right. You are going to go into the kingdom, all right, calling upon these false names, Jesus, and, you know, and so on and so forth. And as the Apostle Gabar had went into in this lesson, you know, I only got, you know, about this far, maybe a minute, a minute or two past it. So, you know, uh, go and check out the lesson. You know, it's edifying, of course, right? So uh, let me go ahead and start off with this in the book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter, you know, just showing you uh, the importance on calling upon those names in the, the pure Hebrew. All right, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 19. In verse uh, 18, all right, it says, uh, in that day, now this is a prophecy, all right, concerning the times that we're in, all right, it says, in that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction, right? So it says, in that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt and pursuant to Revelation, the 11th chapter, this place being in America is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, Right. So this land that it's speaking of isn't talking about ancient Egypt. It's talking about here in America, Babylon the Great, right? But it says that what they shall speak the language of Canaan. Now, what is the language of Canaan? All right, we go into it. Just typing it in on Google. It says, uh, what is the language of Canaan? All right, this is the AI overview. The Canaanites spoke a variety of languages, including, you read this, it says Phoenician, a Semitic language spoken in the Levant, particularly in Tyre, Zidon, and, and Byblos, right? And the Phoenician is Hebrew, okay? But it says um, uh, Hebrew, all right, the only main Canaanite language still spoken today, Ammonite, right? And you go into these different, you know, uh, uh, sons of Shem, right? They were all speaking Hebrew, all right? Now, throughout time, you know, you had different dialects and, you know, uh, so on and so forth that happened. And then, you know, you got to what you have today, a, a variety of different languages, but they all go back to the Hebrew, all right, because that's what we were all speaking at one point, you know, and then the Lord confounded the languages. All right. Uh, as the scripture says that the Lord would do so throughout time. All right. You have these different developments of different languages and you still see the the remnants of the original Hebrew and all these various languages. All right. Even the alphabet. All right. The alphabet, you know, you got A, B, C, D. And what is it in the Hebrew? All Alright, but you see the remnants of the original, the Abagadaha, A, B, C, D, right? And then you even have, uh, you know, very, that's just one example, you know, but, you know, throughout uh, all these different languages, uh, you can see the remnants of it going back to the pure Hebrew, which is what the Lord has returned unto us in these last days for the purpose of us calling upon his true name. Being Yahweh, all right, the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son's true name in the pure Hebrew, being Yahweh Shah, because these are the names that are going to be exalted and glorified and magnified throughout the earth. All right, the credit of the destruction of America, Babylon the Great, 
the credit of the deliverance of the uh, nation of Israel, starting off with the elect, or is going to be accredited to those names, Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh, Shai. Right. But anyways, uh, back to that Isaiah 19 and 18. And that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan. So showing you that, you know, we would be speaking the Hebrew and swear to the Lord of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. All right. And that day shall there be an altar to the Lord Yahweh in the midst of Egypt, in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord Yahweh. And it shall be, a, be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts. In the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto the Lord Yahweh by Shem because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Right. And I want to read all that just to make the point of, you know, uh, as where, you know, we were returned, it started off mentioning how we would be speaking the Hebrew. All right, it talks about these camps being raised up. Those are the altars that it speaks of, uh, speaks about, right? And then it says that these uh, uh, altars will be assigned unto the Lord, all right? And then the Lord will send Yahweh Shai, all right? So just showing you the procession of events, you know, you know, all coinciding once together, but just making the main point that we will be speaking the language of Canaan here in Babylon the Great, all right? So you have different individuals that talk about, uh, you know, we're going to get the, the, the name and the kingdom and everything like that, right? But we've been given the, the Hebrew language that we can call upon that name here on this side, all right. Before, you know, Yahweh Shai will return to destroy uh, Babylon, man. All right. So let me grab this in the book of Zephaniah as well. All right. This is the book of Zephaniah. Chapter uh, three and verse eight, it says, therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms. To pour upon them mine indignation. Is not the Lord doing that? All right, gathering the nations. All right, you're even hearing about now, you know, uh, the American uh, military being sent out to various uh, areas in the Middle, Middle East. All right, they're going to be sent into that land that's barren and desolate. All right, you've got the other nations out there, you know, that they're going through various skirmishes and whatnot. But those nations are being gathered right now. All right, for the Lord to uh, pour out his wrath upon them. All right, in the midst of uh, World War Three, as they're fighting against one another. All right. Out in that land in the Middle East, they're going to turn and fight against Yahweh Shai when he uh, physically returns. All right. Like it talks about and describes in the book of Second Nurses, the 13th chapter. Right. But it says uh, uh, to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then. All right. Will I turn to the people a pure language. Right. So, you know, that pure language is being returned unto us now, starting off on this side. All right. With the Lord gathering these various nations over in that land. Right. It starts off on this side and then we'll get the totality, the fullness of it. All right. In the kingdom. OK, but it starts here on this side. That's why I mentioned in that book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter, that we will be speaking the language of Canaan, which is the Hebrew. As a matter of fact, uh, I wanted to read a little bit further down. All right. It says Hebrew. Going back to the Google that I went into, it says the origins of Hebrew called the language of Canaan is uh, in Isaiah 19 and 18. And its place among the Semitic languages have been contested issues since the rise of modern historical linguistics. All right. But, you know, we know what it is. All right. That language of Canaan is the pure Hebrew that's been returned unto us as the Lord prophesied that he will return back unto his people. OK, not those small hats over in that land saying that they got the real language right. Now, you had a guy named Ben Yehudi. All right. Who uh, uh, um, who added different vowel points. All right. To. Uh, to the Hebrew or right, for pronunciation purposes. All right. Because when you look at all the uh, when you look at all the uh, the old artifacts all right, and the old, you know, uh, inscriptions and everything like that, they didn't have vowel points. All right. They didn't have those various vowel, vowel points. OK, that was something that was added. All right. And that changes the pronunciation of the word. OK, so it's not like we can go into a time machine and listen to how Moses said the name Yahweh, And, you know, we could look at the characters. All right. But on how to pronounce it, that goes based off of faith. And we know based off of the faith in these precepts and these prophecies that the Lord will return into a superior language in the book of Zephaniah. All right. We know that the elect were being um, applauded by Ezra in the book of Second Ezra, the second chapter, all right, for standing stiffly for the name of the Father and the Son. Okay. So we know that prophetically the Lord would return unto us the pure language. All right. Return unto us. 
his pure, uh, the pure name, uh, uh, his pure name, man. The heavenly father's pure name and his only begotten son's pure name. All right. And those names, once again, are going to be made famous throughout the earth through the plagues and destruction that the Lord is going to send upon this place. Right. But anyways, it says um, that's pretty much it in that, you know, you could read further into this. You know, but um, the language of Canaan is the Hebrew, right? But it says back in Zephaniah 3 and 9, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord Yahweh. So the purpose is to call upon the name of the Father, all right, and the name of the Son. That's why we've been given the pure language, right? So we don't need to know every last word in the pure Hebrew and everything like that, but we do need to know the name of the Father and the Son, all right? And that's what, you know, we're commanded to teach, okay, to make manifest unto the people. Right. It says, for then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Now, on this side, it's only the elect that's going to come together and serve him with one consent. And in the kingdom of heaven, obviously, all of our people are all going to be righteous. Are right? we going to have to teach them the name of the father, the name of the son? Right. All of our people are going to be all righteous. All right. Pursuant to the new covenant that the Lord made with our forefathers. All right. All of our people are going to have the law, judges and commandments in their inward parts. All right, so the elect that's delivered and the children that they have, they're going to have this within them, okay? They're going to be programmed knowing these different things without having to be uh, having to uh, teach them, okay? As we have to teach on this side, all right? Especially being, you know, raised up in this society where we've been calling on false gods like Jesus or even like the man made the mistake of uh, calling, the, calling the Lord Yeshua in his comment, all right? But the Lord has set forth his prophets, his true men, as it says in the book of uh, Micah or uh, Amos, the third chapter. Let me hit this real quick. Amos chapter three and verse six. It says, uh, Amos three and seven, it says, surely the Lord, Yahweh power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So, you know, for a time period, the Lord's true name, the true name of the father or the true name of the of the son. All right. They've been uh, hidden. All right. They haven't been as well known. All right. But they're being made famous again. And it starts off with the teaching of the true prophets of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, whose these secrets have been revealed unto. All right. To uh, teach it unto the rest of the people. All right. This is the book of Acts. The 26th chapter. All right. Now we'll, you know, start segueing into actually going into the Hebrew. All right. The pure language. Right. To. uh To uh, go into the name Yahweh Shai. Acts 26 and verse 14. It says, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue. All right. So keep that in mind. Everything that we're going to read written in red was uh, spoken in the Hebrew tongue. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So this is all saying being spoken of in Hebrew. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am. It says Jesus here, whom thou persecutest. Now we know that the Lord didn't say Jesus, all right? The letter J didn't come about until a couple hundred years ago, all right? So we know that wasn't his name. So prior to that, if you look in the, you know, uh, 1611 KJV, all right, <laughs> what you gonna see? Iezus, right? That's not his name, okay? That's not Hebrew. So what would be his name? All right, what is his name in the Hebrew tongue? What did the Lord, Yahweh Shai, <laughs> that's what, it, what he said, of course, but what did he... Uh, what did he say to um to Saul here? Okay. What did he say to him? It says, I am what? It wasn't Jesus, it wasn't Jesus. All right. He would have, of course, said, Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecutest, right? So let's grab this in the book of Proverbs. All right. This is Proverbs chapter uh 30 and verse 4. It says, who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell, right? So showing you that, you know, it will be somewhat of a mystery all right, of the true name of the father and the true name of his son. But as we read in that book of Amos, that the Lord revealeth his secrets, those mysteries, all right? unto his servants, the prophets, all right, to teach the people, okay, because there will come a time where we would discontinue from our heritage, because why would, uh, um, why would this being said, uh, why would this statement be made here? See, during the time of, um, you know, King Solomon, right, 
you know, the true name of the father was very well known. All right. After the uh, after um, the Exodus, all right, the name of the heavenly father was made famous. All right. Even the heathen said, Rahab, she said, I heard of the fame of Yahweh. All right. You know, and what he did for you and your people um, delivering you out of the hand of the Egyptians, roughly paraphrasing. So through those plagues, the 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 name of the heavenly father was made famous. Right. So during this time, that name was still well known. Why would he say what is his name? If everybody knew it. All right. And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. OK. So that would be something that once again, because we discontinue from our heritage all right, that we would um, it wouldn't be well known. All right. The, the true name of the father and the true name of the son have always been throughout the earth. All right. But now it's going to be made famous again. Right. So let's grab this in the book of Baruch. All right. Baruch. Chapter two, and we'll start up at verse 28. Baruch 2 and 28, it says, As thou spakest by thy servant Moses in the day when thou didst command him to write the law before the children of Israel, saying, If you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. Right. And that's what happened. We were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. I went through the curses and so on and so forth. Right. Verse 30 says, For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. But and the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves, right? So even though we were discontinued from our heritage, which, which is us being kicked out of our land, all right, first and foremost, all right, then the heritage being the law, statutes, and commandments, all right, knowing the name of the father, right, and his son, these are all things that, you know, showing you that we were discontinued from our heritage, all right? We didn't even know who we were, okay? We had to come back to the remembrance of us, right? So it says, uh... For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. So it would be we remember that we're the Israelites who our power is right and shall know that I am the Lord, their power. For I will give them in heart and ears to hear and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. Right. So showing you the importance of the name that we will be meditating on, reflecting on. Right. You know. And the Holy Spirit was going to bring all these things back to our remembrance, man. This is the book of uh, St. John, chapter 14. All right. And that's why these things are revealed unto us now. But once again, it's all of faith. All right. Because one, you can't go into a time machine and hear, you know, how how the, the father, you know, the exact pronunciation. All right. We could look at the characters and, you know, a person can say, well, I think this character sounds like that. Well, hey, so be it. All right. You know, we'll see if that if that's going to get you salvation. All right. Because there's only one name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. So if you're wrong, <laughs> you know, it's a wrap to be playing because the elect is going to go into that chariot or into those uh, chariots uh, calling upon the true name of the father and the son, as we're going to read and prove through the scriptures. Right. OK, you aren't going to go into the chariot. It ain't going to be one person making it on the chariot talking about some Jesus. OK. Or talking about some Yeshua. Right. Or talking about some Yahweh. None of that madness. Right. It says uh, St. John, chapter 14, verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. So the Holy Spirit would bring these things back to our remembrance. And it's through the teaching all right, of the prophets, man. St. John, chapter 17 and verse uh, six. It says, I manifested thy name. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking, right? And I manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word, right? So Yahweh Shai said, I manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. So, you know, I want to go into this word manifest. I manifest it, right? It says to make manifest or visible or known what has been hidden or unknown, and that's how it's been regarding the name of the father and the son for uh, uh for a while. Us in this captivity, you know, being raised up here. We didn't grow up hearing about Yahweh Shai. All right. Yahweh. Right. No, nah, we grew up hearing all these different names. You know, the you know, the names of Baal. All right. These other other gods and, you know, Jesus and all this madness. Right. You know, so it's been hidden for a while, but it's always been here. All right. It says, this is my name for, uh, uh, unto all generations. When, 
you know, Moses asked for the name of the heavenly father. All right. He told him. All right. He told him, <laughs> you know, he said, Yahweh, man, and this is my name unto all generations. Right. So that wasn't going to change, man. OK, but anyways, it says uh, uh, to manifest whether by words or deeds or in any other way, make actual and visible, realize to make known by teaching. Right. So these things have to be taught. All right. These things have to be taught to our people. So you got people talking about some, well, you know, everybody don't speak Hebrew and X, Y, and Z. Well, that's why you teach them, okay? As easy as that. Just like you got the ability to put up a, you know, a lesson, and that's why through the Spirit, you know, our lessons, you know, at Great Millstone, you're going to hear the name of the Father and the Son in every lesson, all right? In the beginning, intro, in the end, right? So if you learn anything from us, you at least learn the name, all right? You know, your brother will do a lesson going into herbs, right? But you're going to hear them names, okay? So there's no excuse because you got people that try to use that as an excuse. Oh, and, you know, people don't know Hebrew and this and that and the third, but you, you can go and teach them about being an Israelite, all right? You can go and teach them about, they ain't supposed to, you sisters, why you got these, your jeans on? Supposed to have dresses, right? You can teach them all that, but you can't teach them the name, you know, which is that, that's madness. All right. You know, concerning IUIC and different things and, the, and their doctrines change. All right. At one point we have the name, you know, the true name is Yahweh and the true name is son is Yahweh Shai. But you can call them whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, We're going to get the names later in the kingdom. You know, right now we don't have it. You know, so it's been all types of confusion, man. That's not standing stiffly for the name of the heavenly father and the name of his only begotten son and standing stiffly for the name doesn't mean standing stiffly for the law, says the commandments, contrary to what they try and portray. All right, there's a true name to be called upon. All right, you are going to call upon the law, statutes, and commandments in prayer. All right, to uh, <laughs> to have your prayer answered. Okay, that's complete madness. All right, but anyways, you know, uh, so it says to make known by teaching. All right, to become manifest, be made known. Um, and that's pretty much it. All right, so the main point is that these things have to be taught. All right, and once again, the elect they're going to receive these things. It all goes into faith and belief. Because we can break it down. All right, we can go into the Hebrew as we're about to, you know, go into these things and show you, you know, his name is Yahweh and uh, uh, Yahweh Shai, right? The name, the only begotten son's name is Yahweh Shai Salakia, you know, because that's what we're going to go into through the spirit. And a person can still not believe it or a person can be like, oh, okay, well, I'm still calling whatever I want. It's been working for me. All right, well, you know, we're going to see how long that's going to work for you, okay? Because the Lord is not going to give his glory into another any longer. All right, we're entering into a time where miracles are going to be done in these names and it's going to be made manifest that the name Jesus and Yahweh and Yeshua, all these other various names have no power. All right. The Lord is going to show forth where the true power lies, man. All right. Sirach 17 and 10, it says uh, uh, in the elect shall praise his holy name. Right. So the elect are going to have the true name of the father and the true name of his only begotten son. That's pretty plain, man. It says in the book of Micah. All right. Micah. Chapter six and verse nine. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod and who at the point of this. So whom the Lord imparts that spirit of wisdom unto. They're going to see the name of the father and his only begotten son. Right. So they're going to recognize and hear those names and and believe it. All right. They're going to believe in those names. As a matter of fact, we go into this word. See, it actually means to fear as well. Right. It's the Hebrew word Yara, if I'm not mistaken. All right. It says uh, they shall see. All right. So it's Ya, Ra and the Ah, Yara. All right. Which also means to uh, teach as well. You know, let me uh, verify that. Let's see. Fearing, reverent. All right. OK, well, let me uh, stick with what I'm 100 percent sure of. All right. As we're reading right here, you know, it says uh, to fear revere and be afraid right so the man of wisdom all right is going to have a reverence and a fear towards those powerful names man yahweh why yahweh shai they aren't going to have an attitude you can call the lord whatever you want and you can call them yo play yogurt and those names really don't hold weight and it doesn't matter they aren't going to make light of it they aren't going to take the names the name of the lord in vain now nah, they aren't going to have that attitude towards the true name of the father and the true name of his only begotten son they're going to revere all right they're going to have a fear a reverence towards those holy names and that was an issue that jake had even back back then all right jake didn't have a, a true ref, reverence all right and a fear towards those names man all right 
And just to back that up, this is in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 28. And, you know, through the spirit, we're still going to get to going into uh, the name Yahweh Shah in the Hebrew. All right. Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 58. OK, it says uh, it says, if thou will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord Yahweh thy power right now. I just want to see how it's worded here. Now, the Lord here in all caps. You have the Yah, Ha, Wa, and the Ha. All right. Yahweh. Okay. Yahweh. Right. So you had individuals even back then that didn't show a fear and a reverence towards the name Yahweh. Right. Or you had certain instances where Jake would put the Lord's name Yahweh on an idol, you know. Here, this idol that I made out of gold and everything like that, we're going to call this idol Yahweh. You know, all types of madness Jake was doing, man. So that's why the Lord was like, you know, what? I'm going to take my name away from you niggas, man. All right, you niggas don't know how to act. You don't reverence me. All right. You know what? You ain't, you finna forget who you are. All right. Y'all just, y'all acting like heathens. Look, y'all going to, y'all can go ahead and be like these niggas then, <laughs> you know? But once again, through the mercy of the Lord, you know, uh, now we've been returned back to who we are and knowing our heritage and, you know, coming back into the ancient past. All right. The old past, as the scriptures tell us to seek, seek you the old past. All right. Go for the search of your forefathers. All right. The right way. Where's the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your soul. So this is the good way. Right. This is what it is. One more. The book of Malachi. All right. And concern, the, you know, concerning these. uh to different individuals, man, that call themselves leaders and priests and everything like that, but they aren't even bringing reverence to the name of the Father and the Son, Malachi 2 and 1. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, said the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already because ye do, you, ye do not lay it to heart. Right. So you have to glorify those names, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right. And glorify the name Yahweh and Yahweh Shai don't mean saying Christ every other word. All right. You know, making it seem like you can still call on, you know, Jesus and it's okay. Now, nah, these aren't light things, man. All right. And the Lord is going to show that forth, right? So let's go into this in the book of Acts. All right. This is the book of Acts, chapter. Uh, Acts, chapter 7 and verse 44. It says. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with. Now it says Jesus here, but this is speaking about Joshua. All right, let me continue to read. It says into the possession of the Gentiles, whom the Most High drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. So right here, it says Jesus, right? But it's speaking of Joshua, even when you read in the NLT. Verse 45, years later, when Joshua led our ancestors in battle against the nations that the Most High drove out of this land, the tabernacle was taken with them into their territory and it stayed there until the time of King David. So the question is, why are they using the word Jesus for Joshua here? All right, and the reason that is, is because they have the same name in the Hebrew. All right. Now, you look up the word Jesus here. All right, I'm going to get to the point. And C says, Joshua was the famous captain of the Israelites, Moses' successor. And it gives you two precepts where they mistakenly, all right. And really the mistake was putting in Jesus. Because if anything, they should have put in Joshua everywhere Jesus is written. All right. That would have been more of a proper uh, transliteration. All right. But Jesus is a, is a so like, yeah, as I was mentioning, um, they have the same name um, as we're going to read here. Right now, let's grab this in the book of Sirach, the 46th chapter as well. Sirach chapter 46 and verse one, it says, it says Jesus here, but it's speaking about Joshua. All right. Joshua, the son of Nave. All right. The son of Nun, as we're going to read, it says was valiant in the wars and was the successor of Moses and prophecies. And, all right. So once Moses, you know, he passed the torch to Joshua and Joshua led us into the promised land. Right. It says uh, who, according to his name 
was made great for the saving of the elect of the Most High. And this is exactly, you know, this is an omen, all right, for lack of a better term, of what Yahweh Shai would physically do in his second return, all right? It says, because what is he going to do? Yahweh Shai is going to save the elect, all right? Yahweh Shai said in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, that in the last days I will send my angels to gather mine elect from the four corners, the four winds of uh, heaven, roughly paraphrasing, right? But it says, uh, for the saving of the elect of the Most High and taking vengeance of the enemies, and is not Yahweh Shai going to actually do that? That rose up against them, that he might set Israel in their inheritance, and is not Yahweh Shai going to place us in our land? All right, so what Joshua did was a prelude to what Yahweh Shai would literally do. All right, Joshua literally did this, but once again, it was just a prelude of what Yahweh Shai would do for us in these last days, right? But it says, Jesus, the son of Nave, right? And this is speaking of Joshua, the son of Nun. So let's grab this in the book of Numbers, the 13th chapter. All right. Numbers chapter 13 and three. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, Yahweh sent them from the wilderness to Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. And these were their names of the tribe of Reuben, Shemua, the son of Zechor. Right now, let me jump down to verse eight of the tribe of Ephraim. Oshea, the son of Nun, right? It says Oshea, all right, which would be either Hosea, all right, Hosea, you know, uh, the son of Nun. And, you know, I'll explain that later. Verse 13, all right, it's all the same word in the Hebrew. Um, I'm sorry, verse uh, 16 now. It says, these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshea, the son of Nun, Jehoshua, right now. First, let's go into Oshea. All right. Oshea, it says. All right. It says, uh, Ha, this is the Ha character. All right, let me just highlight this. From right to left, when you read in the Hebrew, you read from right to left, okay? So looking at the first character on the far right, this is the Ha. The se second character is Wa, Ha, Wa. The uh, third character is the Sha, so Ha, Wa, Sha. And then the last character, all right, that kind of looks like a Y on the far end on the left here is a I. So we have Ha, Wa, Shai. Ha, Wa, Shai. All right. So before Joshua, all right, was known as, um, uh, or before uh, Joshua was given the name Joshua, all right. Moses was calling him Hawashai. All right, Hawashai. And you see here, um, one, it says Hosea or Hosea or Oshea, all right, which is all the same word, same Hebrew characters, right? It says salvation here. But um, when you go into the Strongs, uh, what does it say here? It says uh, deliverer, all right, deliverer. So that's what Hawashai means, deliverer. All right. Uh, it also says in the Genesis Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, welfare, salvation. All right. You know, but mainly focusing on what deliverer or salvation. Right. All right. So then that's Oshea. Now let's go to Jehoshua. All right. Now, Jehoshua. Now, when you go all the way up here. This is what we're looking at. OK. You see the Yah from right to left. Yah. Ha wa shy. All right, so it's how was shy just with a ya in the front. Yeah, how was shy. All right, so Moses went from calling him how was shy to yeah, how was shy. All right, Oshea to Joshua is how was shy to yeah, how was shy in the pure Hebrew. Right now, you have to be careful because I'm gonna click on the blue letter here and you're gonna see that it goes off. Okay, see when we went in the original text. It didn't have this extra Y character here. All right. Now, when you read it here, it says, Ya, Ha, Wa, Sha, Wa, I. So it says, Ya, Ha, Wa, Sha, Y, which that's incorrect. Because as we read in the original text, and even if you look over here to the left, all right, um, when you go into the original text, as we looked up at, you look up here, this is what's actually written is Ya, Ha, Wa, Sha. All right. So they go off here, which is the stumbling block, all right, to get you to, you know, throws you off on what the true name of the only begotten son's name is, right? But we see clearly that it's uh, here, Yahweh Shai, all right? 
So it went from deliverer to he delivers. All right. He saves, which is what it was said unto Mary. All right. Or not Mary. It was said unto. Um, let me go to it real quick. Let's just go to Matthew 1 and 21. It says. Um, all right. Yeah, this is uh, spoken to Joseph. Right. But I'm gonna get to the point. And she shall, Matthew 1 and 21, and she shall bring forth the son and thou shalt call his name. Now, once again, it says Jesus here. All right. But we know that he has the same name as Joshua in the pure Hebrew. What is it? Yahweh Shai. All right. So thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. He delivers. He saves. Right. So that's what the name Yahweh Shai means. He delivers or he saves. Right. He's salvation. OK, and that's what Yahweh Shai is going to do, deliver and save his elect. And ultimately, he's the deliverer of the entire nation of Israel because they're going to be born back through the loins of the elect or right, fulfilling the promise that the Lord promised unto our forefathers that all uh, the seed of Abraham would have uh, those inheritance rights that would be, you know, taken into that land. Right. So that's it. <laughs> OK, that's it right there. So let's end it off with a couple of more precepts. This is the book of Acts. Acts chapter four, uh, four and verse 12, it says, uh, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. So this is the key, or one of the major keys to salvation. All right. Because you aren't going to make it into the kingdom without having these names. OK, you must have them. Acts four and 12. All right. Let's grab this in the book of Zechariah. All right. And once again, these were the names that. Ezra commended those men for standing so stiffly for in the book of second Ezra, the second chapter, man. But I'm going to end it off with this as uh, Zechariah 13 and eight. It says, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. Talking about two thirds of our people being destroyed here in America or right, in this land. Right. Verse nine. And I will bring the third part. So one third through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. All right. These are they that have made it out of great tribulation, man. All right. It says, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is my power. So the elect that make it out of here, what are they going to be doing? Calling upon the name. All right. Plain and simple, man. So, you know, Lord's what I was edifying. I'm going to end it right there and give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakurash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.